Who can find favor in the eyes of God? Do you believe that you can find favor in the eyes of God? That is something that we're going to be taking a look at here in our Sunday school lesson this week, where our Sunday school lesson this week, we'll see that the story of Ruth, it continues. The Moabitess, the Gentile woman who married into a family who was of the tribe of Judah. We saw last week in our Sunday school lesson that she committed herself to following Naomi, to following Naomi to her land, the land of Bethlehem to where Ruth said that Naomi's God would be her God. She committed herself to the Lord. So could this Moabitess woman, could she find favor in the eyes of God? Let's take a look at that here in our Sunday school lesson this week. We're over in the second chapter of Ruth and the eighth verse. Our lesson, it opens up after Naomi and Ruth have returned to Bethlehem. We are introduced to a man named Boaz there in the scripture, who we'll see there speaking to Ruth. We see him giving instructions to Ruth about gleaning in the field. Boaz, we're told there in the first verse that Boaz, he was a man who was of great wealth. We're told that he was of the family of Elimelech. Elimelech, you should sure remember from our Sunday school lesson last week, that was the husband of Naomi. So why was it that Boaz was giving instructions to Ruth? We'll see there in the second verse that Ruth had gone to Naomi with the desire to go to the field to glean heads of grain in the field. Gleaning in the field, for those of you who may be wondering what does that mean to glean in the fields? Gleaning in the field was something that had happened after the reapers. The reapers, they would go in, they would get a harvest from the field and whatever was left over in the field, whatever grain was left over in the field, those who would glean in the field, they, they would come and they would essentially scavenge in the field for the leftover grains that was in the field. What we find over in the book of Leviticus, if we take a look at that scripture there, we'll see in the book of Leviticus that it was the law for the children of Israel to leave leftover grains in the field. They were not supposed to completely wipe out the grains in the field. The scripture in the book of Leviticus tells us that the children of Israel, they were supposed to leave these leftover grains in the field for those who may have been poor, those who may have been in need, for even the strangers who may have been wandering in the land and may have been in need of food. So if we think about this for a moment, Naomi and Ruth, after both losing their loved ones, Naomi has lost her husbands, she has lost her husband, I should say, and both of her sons, and then Ruth, she lost her husband, who was the son of Naomi. Both of these women, they were not rich. They were not of great wealth. Both of these women were poor. So it would make sense that these women coming from the land of Moab back to Bethlehem, who would not have had much, it would make sense for Ruth to want to go out to the field and to glean in the field. We'll see there in the third verse that after Naomi encouraged her to go out into the field and to glean in the field, we'll see that Ruth went to a field and she went to glean in the field. The field just happened to be Boaz's field. Boaz, he would eventually see her gleaning in the field and he was curious about who she was. And so he asked about who the woman was, who this stranger was that was in the field gleaning in the field. And so the supervisor who was over the reapers of the field told him exactly who, who Ruth was and they allowed her to glean in the field, which again, that was lawful for the children of Israel to do. It was lawful for them to allow a stranger to enter into the field and to glean into the field. So this was what led to a meeting that we will see, not necessarily here in our Sunday school lesson this week, but next week, we'll see that this led, this all led to a meeting that would become a divine, a holy meeting that was set forth, that was set in place by the Lord. Something that I learned growing up from my dad is there is no such thing as luck when it comes to the Lord. There's no such thing as coincidence when it comes to the Lord. He has a will and his will will be done. There is no fighting the will of the Lord. Something that we're gonna see here in our lesson is that Ruth has found favor in the eyes of God here. Let's take a look at that. Again, taking a look there at the eighth verse, We'll see Boaz treating Ruth as one of his own rather than like a stranger. He encourages her not to glean from any other fields. In fact, he tells her to reap with the others, reap with the other women in the field. This meant that rather than gleaning for leftover grains in the field, this meant that Ruth could now reap from the best 
that was in the field. So it would seem that Ruth has found favor in the eyes of Boaz, right? Because he could have simply let her glean from the field as that was the lawful thing to do. But it seems here that Boaz, it seems that he is going a step further. So what we'll see there in the 10th verse is that, that Ruth recognizes that she has found favor in the eyes of Boaz. And she even asked him, we'll see there, why have I found favor in your eyes? She said to him, I am a foreigner. I am just a foreigner. And so, so again, it was lawful for the children of Israel to allow strangers to glean from the field. That was what was encouraged for them to do. But there's something that we should remember from our Sunday school lesson last week from the seventh chapter of Deuteronomy where there is a certain line that the children of Israel, that they were supposed to toe when it would come to strangers in the land, especially those who were native, those who were people in the land of Canaan. There was a certain line that the children of Israel, that they weren't supposed to cross. And so again, we'll see here that Boaz, he responds there in the 11 verse by speaking about all he had heard Ruth going through what Ruth and Naomi had gone through in Moab. Ruth and Naomi, they had had it rough. Again, they had lost loved ones and they were coming back to, to a land that for Naomi, it wasn't a foreign land, but for Ruth, this was a foreign land. She was a foreigner in the land. So he tells us there in the 12th verse that the Lord was repaying her work with a reward. And now she was in the refuge of God. So that sounds like a rather noble reason from, from Boaz to be treating Ruth in the manner in which he was doing. And again, it seems to us that he is towing that line by being lawful, allowing a stranger to, to glean from, from his field there. So we'll see there that Ruth, that she thanked Boaz for his kindness. And then we'll see that Boaz's kind gesture, it didn't just stop at this point. We're told there in the 14th verse that that Boaz invited her to sit and to eat with him and the reapers as well. We'll see him passing food to her to eat and that she's eating and that she's being satisfied with the food while also keeping some of the food for herself as well. And so we'll see there that, that she's having a, a joyful occasion. She's being treated so fairly, right? And there in the 15th verse, when she rises back up to go out into the field to glean from the field, we'll see that Boaz again, taking it a step further here. He tells the young men there to let her glean even among the sheaves and not to stop her. Don't don't try to, to stop her from from gleaning from the field. He tells the young men there to let the bundles fall purposefully for her. So talk about finding favor. <laughs> Ruth has definitely found favor in the eyes of Boaz. It's like Boaz is rolling out the red carpet for her. Have you ever had days where it just seemed like you have found such favor where everything just seems to be falling for you. Everything just seems to be falling in your hands. That's a wonderful feeling, isn't it? And so Ruth, she is having a, a wonderful time in, in the strange land that in our Sunday school lesson last week, remember Naomi was trying to stop Ruth from, from coming with her back to her land. But again, something that I want to remind you of is what Ruth said to Naomi that we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week. Ruth said to Naomi that your land will be my land, your people will be my people. And then she said to Naomi, your God will be my God. Ruth had committed herself to the Lord. And something that we see here is that God is certainly committed to Ruth in return. When you love the Lord, God, I tell you today, that God, he will love you as well. And so, we're told there in the 17th verse that at the end of the day, Ruth, she had gleaned about a basket full of barley, Nephath, a bushel of barley. Ruth, she was a hard working woman, wasn't she? We're told there at the, in the 18th verse that she then returned to Naomi as well. And at the end of the day, after all the, the work that she had done, sitting down and eating with Boaz and, and the reapers as well, We'll see that Ruth, that, that she was satisfied with, with all that she had done. And so when we take a look at the, the 20th verse scripture that is outside of our lesson. I want to share it with you, though. We'll see that Naomi was impressed. She was impressed with what Ruth 
had gathered. She was impressed with what Ruth had told her. And we'll see there in the 20th verse, again, Naomi, that, that she was a woman of faith because she praises the Lord for not forsaking them in his kindness, in his goodness towards them. And so that's, it's, it's a very powerful statement uh, from Naomi, this praise from Naomi to about the Lord not forsaking them. It's very powerful because again, if you, if you think about it, if you put yourself in Naomi's shoes from our lesson last week, she had lost everything. And, and it would have been easy for her to think that she was out of favor with the Lord. But again, she had heard about God and how he had blessed his people. And she went back home. She went back to the land of Bethlehem. And for Ruth, Ruth had no idea about the land. But again, she committed herself to, to sticking by Naomi. She committed herself to the land, right? She committed herself to the people of the land, to, to Naomi's people who were the children of Israel. And then again, most importantly, she committed herself to the Lord. And so Ruth, a stranger in the land, was treated, Boaz treated her as one of his own. She found favor in the eyes of Boaz, but most importantly, Ruth had found favor in the eyes of God. And Naomi, she recognized this, that it could have been easy, it, for her anyway, to give up on God. It could have been easy for her to fall out of favor with the Lord, but she committed herself to the Lord. And God, in return, had committed herself to himself to Naomi. Ruth had committed herself to the Lord. God had committed himself to her. And Naomi recognized the blessing he rec she recognized the blessing from the Lord towards her and towards Ruth as well. And she gives God praise. She, she thanks the Lord. And so at the start of this lesson, I asked, well, do you believe that you can find favor in the eyes of God? Who can find favor in the eyes of God? Ruth is proof as a Gentile Moabitess woman that anybody can find favor in the eyes of God. Don't ever let somebody tell you that you cannot find favor in the eyes of God. Don't ever let somebody tell you that only a select few, only a special chosen few can find favor in the eyes of God because that is simply not true. It does not matter who you are. It does not matter what your background is or what it is that you have done. You can find favor in the eyes of God. What did Ruth do to find favor in the eyes of God? Even though she was a Gentile woman who may have likely, very likely at one point in time worshiped idols, she turned herself to the Lord. She repented. She committed herself to God. If you desire to find favor in the eyes of God, what do you suppose you need to do? Commit yourself to the Lord, turn to him, repent, go to him and then walk by faith. What we see through Ruth, and again, we haven't seen it just yet, there is a divine purpose that is being worked through Ruth. I tell you today that there is a divine purpose that the Lord will work through you as well. Again, all you have to do is commit yourself to the Lord. God can and he will use anybody, whether you are a man, woman, boy, or girl. Again, scripture proves that time and time and time again. We're seeing that through Ruth in our Sunday School lesson this week. We'll see it through Ruth in our Sunday School lesson next week, but there's going to be more proof of this as we go throughout the summer quarter of our lesson. So, again, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with somebody somewhere. I hope that you're able to take something out of our Sunday School lesson this week. And what is it that I hope that you take out of this Sunday School lesson this week? That you, you can find favor in the eyes of God. No matter who you are, no matter your background, you can find favor in the eyes of God. Don't ever let anybody tell you differently.